It's called If People, and that's in one of the CCD issues also. <laughs> if people love you, that is wonderful, and if people hate you, that is even better, but if people nothing you, that is when you're without purpose. Thank you. Uh, and this next one uh, sort of plays off of that last poem. Uh, and the idea of critics, and this is critics on a personal level, uh, sort of with my train of thought being that no one can criticize me better than I can. Uh, it's this poem, uh, it doesn't have a title yet, but here you go. I wouldn't die for me. I'm pigeon-toed, I walk funny, I can't take me anywhere. My laugh is obnoxious, my voice is whiny. I talk too much, I talk when I don't need to say anything at all. My temper is shorter than my last relationship. The slightest thing will ruin my day and result in a lack of sleep. That same lack of sleep gives me disgusting bags under my eyes. I'm as pale as printer, printer paper. I have all these ugly freckles. My fingers bend back too far, I let my fingernails grow out too long. Most of my t-shirts are too small, my pants barely fit me. I'm incessantly hugged by my baby fat. I have commitment issues, but only when it comes to dieting. My torso is disproportional to my legs. I have clown feet. My big toe is enormous. I have bushy eyebrows. I look like I'm six years old if I don't have facial hair. But if I try to grow a full beard, the mustache part looks nasty. I'm scatterbrained. That's why I just noticed that I used I'm instead of I am in this poem, except for the baby fat line, but I think I did that for emphatic effect. My neck is really long, so I tilt my head down to compensate. I don't shower every day. My teeth have gaps in between them. I get terrible morning breath, even after a nap. My hair looks stupid no matter what I do with it. My jokes offend people. I test the waters when there's a therno thermometer next to me. If I'd studied science as much as I watched wrestling, I would be on the moon right now. None of my hobbies are worthwhile. I give most of my effort to menial tasks. I'm forgetful. I'm not creative enough to come up with any more self-criticisms. I wouldn't die for me. But it's okay. When death's grimy teeth smile, their sun-colored smile at you, and the realization dawns that you are merely an early afternoon snack for its barbed wire jaws, remember, I wouldn't die for you either. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> You've got all the time in the world, my love. All right. <laughs> Uh, this next one, I'm actually compiling a thing for my Heavy Hands Inc. publication. I'll talk about that real quick. I'm not trying to be the New Yorker or Poetry Magazine, because uh, I'm 20. I don't think I'm really capable of accomplishing such a thing yet. We'll see. Give it time. <laughs> <laughs> but basically what I'm looking to do is I'm trying to get any poem that I can that takes uh, a toll on the person reading it, whether it's something that strikes you psychologically, emotionally, anything that will strike a chord in the reader to a strong degree, and that's what I'm putting in my publication. Um, right now, we're doing something completely different than what we normally do, and we're doing a chat book that's going to be released, hopefully in May, of Twitter-length poems. Woo! And it's called Knit Twits, a collection of Twitter-length poems. And uh, this is one of my poems that will be appearing in it. It's called Classy. Yeah. Sex is the only thing significantly less classy when conducted professionally. Thank you. Uh, this is one that I wrote my senior year of high school. Uh, I was going through a lot, really trying to improve myself as a person in just about every way, because uh, I just kind of had the self-realization of what I was doing with my life and how uh, counterproductive it was to what I was trying to accomplish. I've lied about my name to take a break from reality. I've lied about where I live to tell a lie. Wait, hold on, I'm gonna start this one over. I've lied about my name to take a break from reality. I've lied about where I live to take, wait. Okay, I gotta start this one over again. I've lied about where I live to take a break from reality. I've lied about my name to tell a better story. I've lied about my age to seem more mature than I am. I've lied that I'm in love just to save my ass. I've lied up and down this country. I've told many people many things. I've lied to people I barely know. I've lied to my closest friends. I've lied so many times I'm not sure who believes me, and I've lied so many times I'm not sure who I am. If everyone I've lied to, I've lied to myself the most. I've told myself I'm happy when I know that I'm not. I've told myself I'm over things when I've barely come to terms with them. I've told myself I'm confident when I'm filled with insecurities. And I've told myself that I'll change. 
but I think I might be lying. Oh, Thank wow. you. Uh, this next one's about the government in our country, which is spectacular! Yay! Um, U.S. government! U.S.A. Uh, <laughs> I had a title for this, but I actually don't remember it. Uh, and it's not written on here. Um, but it's a little experimental. This is something I'm working on, getting the words to kind of go different places on the page and uh, see how that enhances the poem. We stand in a pit deeper than the grandest of canyons, with waterfalls cascading their substance down at us from every angle. Drowning in the place we built ourselves, we turn to Mr. Washington in desperation, asking what not he can do for himself, but what he can do for his country. With a smile that gleams of freshly cleaned pearls, he tells us, hope. We bellow screams of triumph, toot the horns of ourselves, the water that drowns us still flowing. Thank you. Uh, this next one, these next two actually, I don't know where one of them went, but I think I have it memorized, so I think we should be good. Um, this, I, the next two I wrote on the train ride back uh, over winter break, I took the Amtrak, which is a terrible, irreliable form of transportation, uh, down to see my girlfriend and visit her family, and I wrote these on the way back up, and the title of this poem flows into the poem. This shithole town is an average-length hair that makes up the brush beneath this armpit of a county. On the main road, there is a Subway restaurant with the old Subway logo because Subway Corporation forgot that this Subway existed. <laughs> A river, though shielded by leafless trees, runs through majestically. Thank you. Oh. I don't know where this next one is, uh, so hopefully it's up here. Um, all right. It's called Our Love is a Constellation. The towns, miles, and counties that separate us do not concern me. I'm not worried about them. The stars that make up the constellation of Orion's belt are millions of miles apart, but are still regarded as the world's greatest threat of support and remained forever fastened. Thank you. Uh, and this, I'm actually going to close with this one. Oh, well, if you must. All right, uh, this is going to be the one that I'm uh, closing on, and it's called Politics. The fat man stands on the diving board, bouncing his knees, harmlessly, violently shaking the platform that fools have elevated him to stand on. The crowd persists in their cheering. Thank you. It's uh, my last poem for tonight. can be found if you go to Heavy Hands Inc. with a K dot wordpress dot com. We've got, we've got yeah, my girlfriend has one of our shirts on. Uh, you can find that at cafepress dot com slash HHI store. Uh, I think that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's the link. Uh, but anyway, Heavy Hands Inc. with a K dot wordpress dot com. Uh, we have a couple issues of our print edition of our magazine. We're trying to do checkbooks now. All kinds of great stuff. There's a blog. I post a different song every week, all sorts of great stuff. Check it out. You guys can submit to us. Yeah, that's how we can sing. And, uh, that's my feature. And one more thing. Give it one more time for Maxwell. Great features in February at the cafe. Thank you, thank you.